How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to look at the transition end event inside JavaScript. Um, so this event right here allows you to react to when a CSS transition has completed. Um, so for an example here we have a blue box on the HTML page. This is a regular div. So we're going to add a transition to this div so that when I press this button here um, the width goes to 100% and once that transition has completed, we're going to react to um, that event. So that is the purpose of the transition end event. Um, so inside the HTML for this document, um, it looks like this right now. We have um, the div down here with an ID of box followed by the button with an ID of btn go. Um, for CSS, we have a width right here and a height down there. Um, and some more things down here. So we're going to add a transition um, to start off with for this box. So um, we're going to say transition, okay, and we can say width at 0 0.5 seconds duration. So now if I was to change the width of this box using um, JavaScript or whatever, um, it's going to have an animation or transition to actually get there, which will take uh, 0.5 seconds long. So now, um, inside the JavaScript, let's just get a reference to both the actual box itself and the button. So we can make a new constant down here, call this one box equal to document get element by ID. We're going to pass inside here box. All right. We can do the same thing for the button. So we can say const btn go equal to get element by ID pass in here bt and go. Alright, so now we have these two constants um, inside the JavaScript. We can now add an event listener to the button so when it gets clicked on we can change the width of the box. So down here we can say btn go dot add event listener. We're going to add the click event and we're going to say box dot style dot width is equal to 100%. So I can save this and refresh my browser, click on the actual button, and there we go. So now we're going to add the transition end event to this div so that when this transition completes, we're going to react to it. All right, so back inside here, let's add an event listener for the actual box. So we're going to say box dot add event listener we're going to add the transition end event so that is the actual event name right there all right as the callback function here we're going to accept the um, the event object so e all right inside here this will be the function that runs when the transition has been completed so i can just simply say alerts um, transition completed Alright, so I can save this one and refresh and press on the button, it finishes, boom, transition completed right there. So that is the basics of the transition end event. But we've actually got some useful info inside the event object. So um, instead of actually um, alerting out a box here, let's just take, um, take this out and instead we're going to console.log, we're going to pass E inside here. So the actual event object given to us by the event listener. So I can save this and refresh and then check the developer console once I press this button and it finishes we get this logged out. If I was to expand this transition event object we have um, two useful properties. We've got the elapsed time and that tells you how long it took for the transition to complete. So basically it's going to be the same thing as this CSS transition duration property. So 0.5 seconds inside the JavaScript, it says 0.5 seconds. If I was to, of course, change this to something like 1.2 seconds inside the CSS, save this and refresh, click on it, it takes longer and inside here we get 1.2. So that's a useful way of actually getting the elapsed time for the actual event. So. Um, this sort of stuff is useful, especially for building user interfaces. We also have the property name property. 
So this one refers to um, the actual transition property that has occurred, if that makes sense. So in this case, the width has changed. So what you can do is you can add a transition end event like this, and you can say something like this. We can say if e dot property name, sorry, property name. So if if e dot property name is equal to width, then do this. So do something here. Um, we can also say if um, the name is equal to something like height, you can do something else. So you can react differently based on the actual property that has caused the transition. And one final thing, I'm just going to set the um, the width back to 100px. So inside here, we're going to say this. So this refers to the actual box itself. So I can say box dot whatever or this dot whatever. So I'm going to say this dot style dot width is equal to 100px. So back to the 100px width. I can save this and refresh. And now click on this button and it goes back to the original width once the transition has completed. And that is the transition end event inside JavaScript. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.